August 11th, 1987. It's only a few hours before the end of Fritz Smith's shift at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. He witnesses one of the guests entering the parts and service room, which is obviously off limits. Fritz goes to retrieve them when... To do in the main hall? Oh my god! Come here! There is blood in the staff room! Fritz awakens in a hospital next to a melting red zombie. Oh my god! Okay, so Fritz is channeling Joseph Joestar in this adaptation of FNAF 2, and I'm here for it. Oh my god! Also, the toilet paper as bandages is so adorable. I love it. And who are you? Who am I? You are not able to recognize me anymore. It's me, Joseph. Oh, Mr. Schmidt, you are finally conscious. After three months in a coma. Three, three months? months? No worries, your insurance will cover everything. Your arm looks perfect now. And you can go back home. I think that nurse is an animatronic. There's just no way she's human. I think that's the twist. No worries, your insurance will cover everything. Oh yeah, I'm sure that the health insurance plan for a security guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is just great. It's gonna cover a three month hospital stay, no questions asked. No worries. This definitely isn't America. The next day, Fritz dons this hat that makes him look like Jack Nicholson from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and runs into the local newspaper man. You know, I left the hospital just yesterday and I am currently looking for a new job. The postman hands Fritz a newspaper and... Freddy Fazbear's Pizza? Help wanted. You are invited to my birthday party. Security night guard needed. Well, of course you need a security guard. You put an advertisement for your fucking birthday in the classified section of the newspaper. Now everyone in town knows and all sorts of weird people are gonna show up. And yeah, you are gonna need a security guard. Whoever took out this ad created the problem that they're trying to solve. It's like an Ouroboros of stupid. Also, only $120 per week? Yeah, there's no way this job has health insurance benefits. Who the hell paid for Fritz's three month coma? Oh, and the dollar sign is in the wrong spot. We put it before the numbers, I know it's weird. There have never been any murders at Freddy's. It's the safest place in town. Okay, figure this out by yourself. I have some work to do. Neil, my dude, you just ran into your friend Fritz, who you haven't seen in three months. You thought they were dead. They then tell you that they've been in the hospital and that people were murdered at Freddy's. In response, all you have to say is figure this out yourself? Neil is kind of a dick. Fortunately, Fritz is undeterred. Neil being a dick simply fills him with determination. I won't leave it like that. We get this really impressive animated scene of a party at Freddy's. There isn't much to note here other than that this child's mother appears to be an animatronic in disguise. I mean, listen to her. Oh, here you are, honey. It's time to go home. At Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, when you're here, you honey. Fazbear. Mom, can we please play here for a while? No. Well, damn, Robo Mom, harsh. Fritz returns to the pizzeria, and honestly, this shot is awesome. I know I'm goofing on this video, but the whole thing is really impressive. Filming an entire half hour film like this using stop motion and Legos is an insane amount of work. I love the whole block scene, the composited neon sign, it's all just really cool. This is how I think a lot of us imagined the FNAF 2 location looking. Then this crazy shit happens. The following is completely unedited. Well then, it's still open. Wow! Soda drink! Need to quit drinking alcohol. Okay, we just got a ton of character development. Fritz begins to approach Freddy's when he's quickly distracted by a soda machine. He puts a coin in the machine and gets a soda, when Shadow Bonnie, otherwise known as RWQFSFASXC, appears in his peripheral vision. Shadow Bonnie is very obviously there, and its head spins around before it disappears. Rather than recoil in fear or question his sanity, Fritz simply blames it on alcohol. 
At the start of the lockdown, my employer cut my hours and reduced my salary by 25%. Obviously, this had a substantial impact on my life and finances. However, it also gave me the time to learn to make videos and eventually start this YouTube channel. Today, we're nearly at 100,000 subscribers, and being able to resign from that job and make videos full-time is a very real possibility. Thank you all so much for watching my videos and subscribing. I want everyone to pay very close attention to this scene. We see the animatronic mother and her son from early earlier leaving the establishment so we know it has only just closed. Fritz walks in, walks past the parts and service room and into the security office. It seems like when they made this they didn't realize that FNAF 2 was a prequel and that it wasn't the same location as in FNAF 1 so Fritz makes a comment on how they removed the doors. The phone rings and this idiot rambles on and on for way too long. Here are the key points. I guess this is edited a little bit. Hey Fritz, I'm glad you're back. I need to tell you that there was another incident here while you were at the hospital. I hate kids. While he's talking, Shadow Freddy appears behind Fritz and does a spooky. They have a new technology embedded in their heads. Now they can easily recognize a criminal if he or she enters the pizzeria. Actually, I remember you were sentenced once for stealing a car. Therefore, you might be in danger. Well, stay safe. Well, it looks like I am stuck. Whoa, 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 Fritz, you just walked into Freddy's, got your soda drink, waltzed through the front doors mere moments after what we presume to be the last guests left, walked to the security office, had a brief one minute conversation with a colleague who explained that even more murders have taken place, your life is in danger, which frankly you already knew since you just recovered from a three month coma caused by the very animatronics at this establishment, and oh, there are no more doors. And what does Fritz say? Well, it looks like I am stuck. Come on, Fritz, dude, what the fuck? The intro to the LEGO FNAF 2 movie gets to the heart of why it's so tricky to adapt the FNAF games. I've made a couple of videos recently about the alleged FNAF film and I've seen a lot of people commenting how they should just adapt the games. It's really not that simple though. This LEGO FNAF movie honestly does a pretty solid job of being faithful to the games. It's not perfect, but the script goes out of its way to reference a lot of the details from the original series. They explain the doors being removed, the vent mechanics in FNAF 2, they include the shadow animatronics, they integrate the bite of 87 in their own kind of way. And it's ridiculous! I mean, it's so much fun and I really encourage everyone to watch it just because it's impressive and also really amusing. But this is what I mean when I say that I just can't see a FNAF movie that tries to adapt the games while still playing it straight. There are just too many things we need to suspend our disbelief for. The biggest one is ironically the recurring motif of the Living Tombstone's incredibly popular Five Nights at Freddy's 1 song. Five Nights at Freddy's, is this where you want to be? I just don't get it. Why do you want to stay? Five Nights at Freddy's. PewDiePie had similar gripes. So many of you bros have suggested this game. I want to go home now. I'm pretty sure the whatever they're paying me here is not worth it. Oh! That's a really good point, and it's hard to avoid. Even in MatPat's very first FNAF game theory, he seemed to recognize that there was just no way to reconcile why someone would keep coming back to this horrible place, night after night. Well, it looks like I am stuck. MatPat's conclusion at the time was that Five Nights at Freddy's 1 was an allegory for a collection of horrible crimes that occurred one night at a Chuck E. Cheese in Aurora, Colorado, and that the protagonist Mike Schmidt was the perpetrator of these crimes. MatPat theorized that each night of the game was Mike's nightmares where he is being tormented by monstrous versions of his victims. Huh, sounds familiar. While later games would go on to disprove this theory, it was a pretty neat episode and the parallels MatPat draws are definitely spooky. Still, I find it really interesting how the theory is almost engineered around the idea that the events of this game just aren't plausible. Nobody would keep coming back to this job night after night. Scott recognized this too. By FNAF 3, the player character had a strong connection to Freddy's, a reason to be there. There. Popular theories suggest that the protagonist of FNAF 3 is Michael Afton, who has taken the job at Fazbear Frights in an attempt to put an end to the horrors his father has wrought. We definitely play as Michael in Sister Location and presumably in FNAF 6 as well. This was sort of by necessity. Michael had an incentive to keep coming back to these horrible places, but even then it was pretty shallow and contrived. It feels like if Michael wanted to put a stop to the Fazbear Frights stuff in FNAF 3, there were probably more efficient ways to go about it than taking a job as the night guard. In the end, he just burns the pizzeria down anyway, so he probably could have just done that from the start. Sister location makes a bit more sense in context, but it also doesn't follow the traditional FNAF formula. FNAF 6 seems to address this the best, with Henry's speech at the end directly addressing their brave volunteer. Henry mentions that there was a way out planned for said volunteer, but upon realizing that it's Michael, this isn't utilized, and everyone remains in the pizzeria simulator until it burns to the ground. In communication. 
It's an awesome ending and it's one of the highlights of the entire FNAF series, but let's be honest, it's not particularly plausible. Can you seriously imagine some random volunteer taking the FNAF 6 position that was not intended for Michael? Like someone running the simulated pizzeria, crawling through the vents, risking their lives all for, what, money? Of course not, it's ridiculous. The fact that it ended up being Michael who opened the franchise allows the story to play out in a reasonable way. But the idea that Henry legitimately imagined some random dude would take up this position and help him lure these animatronics to the FNAF 6 location is, I mean it's absurd. Scott himself spoke about this when discussing the scrapped FNAF movie scripts. One of the problems he seemed to keep running into was giving the characters a reason to be at Freddy's. Without any history with the location, it's too hard for us to suspend our disbelief. It's not uncommon for people to wonder aloud during horror films, why don't they just leave this horrible place? The FNAF story would be that times a thousand. Well, it looks like I am stuck. Why don't they just leave? Why do they keep coming back every night? Is this person stupid? To adapt the games, you need to give the characters a compelling reason to keep coming back to the pizzeria, and that's really hard. Even the games themselves didn't do a great job of this, to be perfectly honest. When we look at the most acclaimed FNAF adaptations like Squimpus's tapes and Baddington's remakes, they explicitly don't try to adapt the gameplay of FNAF. They instead focus on the strong premise and scenario that made the first couple of games so popular in the first place. The FNAF games didn't do a lot of storytelling within the core gameplay itself. Yeah, there would be some phone calls that served as exposition dumps, as well as some clues hidden throughout the cameras maybe, but from FNAF 2 onwards, Scott told the vast majority of the story through the 8-bit minigames. These showed up between nights and they gave us little flashes of insight into the events that had transpired. We were left to pick up the pieces from there. Sometimes we'd be shown something obvious, like William Aft and getting spring trapped, but other times the minigames would feel way less literal and more symbolic and weird. This was a really effective storytelling technique, and the FNAF VHS series makes use of the same kind of thing. Hey, no, 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 no! Instead of linear, coherent narrative, we're given tapes of found footage and we're left to reconstruct a timeline based on the loosely connected events that we witnessed throughout. This is really effective because it doesn't rely on FNAF's gameplay, but rather its scenario. I've always felt that FNAF's scenario is its strongest asset, and any successful adaptation of the series needs to capitalize on that. I also think this extends to some of the issues I had with Security Breach. There were a lot of sections in that game simply involving opening and closing doors in a security office. You know, the traditional FNAF gameplay recreated within Security Breach's 3D environment. This is a neat throwback to the earlier games, and it's cool to do like once or twice, but it just doesn't work. This insistence on adapting the classic FNAF gameplay in fundamentally unique versions of the game is just a bad idea. Help Wanted might be the only case where adapting the classic FNAF gameplay made sense. The old FNAF games translate really well to VR and it's a natural evolution of the series. It's more of a VR remake than it is a full-blown reimagining like Security Breach was. That said, some of the classic FNAF tropes work really well in Security Breach. The Retro Arcade, which was the clever name Scott came up with to avoid saying the word Atari minigames, actually fit quite well into Security Breach. It's a giant arcade pizza plex thing, of course there would be tons of arcade machines there, and I thought stuff like the Balloon Boy minigames and the Princess Quest machines were actually a neat way to integrate those callbacks into the game without dragging it down, the way the closing doors and watching security cameras gameplay did. So much of my enjoyment of Security Breach came from the nostalgia it evoked. Oh look, it's a helpy, cool. Oh, I remember this, this is a reference to that, and so on. The fact that so much of Security Breach's enjoyment is derived from the little callbacks and references to earlier games makes me wonder how people would really feel about that game if it wasn't FNAF, if it was just some new IP with new characters that we didn't have any nostalgia for. I don't think I'd enjoy it, and it's why I say the Mega Pizzaplex is a house built of easter eggs. It's all skin deep. FNAF was great. It was fun, unique, scary, and the individual games never outstayed their welcome. Its legacy is being continued through the fanverse titles, through stuff like Help Wanted, and more. However, I really hope that the future of FNAF games leave the past in the past and give us more new stuff. The coolest parts of Security Breach were the things that surprised us and caught us off guard. I don't think many would say their favorite part of Security Breach were the old school security office segments, they just weren't that fun. Again, maybe once or twice throughout the game, but not over and over. The classic FNAF games were a special thing, and it's hard to replicate their magic. It's especially 
especially hard when you're building a game that's so fundamentally different from them. I enjoy the callbacks to the earlier FNAF games, and I don't want them to go away. However, in the future, maybe Scott and Steel Wool could stop hitting us over the head with them so many times. The original FNAF story was fun, but it was scattered all over the place, and let's be real, Scott made a lot of it up as he went along. Trying to retread that old story and tie the lore of the newer games back to it just isn't good. Trying to shoehorn in the old school FNAF gameplay ideas into these fundamentally different games just doesn't work. It turns FNAF into a self-referential parody of itself, and while that can be enjoyed, such as with the LEGO FNAF movie, I think most would agree that it probably isn't what we want the future of the FNAF series to look like. Let's let the past be the past, and do something really cool and new. Thanks for watching. Well, it looks like I am stuck.